Welcome to Three Crosses Farrier Company. I'm Caleb and we're gonna be shoeing Pearl today. So Pearl foundered. Um, she is slightly laminitic and she's also a endurance horse. And so she competes in endurance competitions. And I wanted to show you that neck right there. That neck is what we call a crusty neck. And it's one of the signs of founder. The other cool thing about Pearl is she's actually a full sister to my gilding, um, but there's about 10 years difference in age. Now one thing you'll notice about her is that I don't take a lot of toe when we get this all cleaned up. She actually doesn't have a ton of growth but she does have some. One of the thing about Founder is that Founder, they tend to grow more heel than they do toe. And because they're already a little tender footed, the portion of the hoof in front of the frog is almost like sacred ground. You have to respect that because, especially with a rotational Founder, well, actually any founder for that matter, but when a coffin bone rotates, it comes closer and closer to the bottom of the foot, the bottom of the sole. So if you shorten that sole too much, that horse will be lame and will be super sore. I do love when my knives are nice and sharp. They, they, I just sharpened them right before I got here and they were, I, I, sharp tools make the job so much easier Now, when nipping the foot, it's super important that we nip nice and flat all the way around. If you don't nip nice and flat, you're going to end up doing a ton more work with your rasp. Now you'll notice here that I'm not taking a ton of foot off. I'm just taking enough foot to get that foot pulled back. I'm actually going to take a little more heel here in just a minute because she still got more heel than what I would like. This uh, mare is out of a stud by the name of Takawas Tamina. I used to work on a ranch before I started shoeing horses. I was training horses for this ranch. And one of the gillings I bought was out of this Takawas stud and this little mare. These horses are actually almost purebred Alteki or Alcatiki, I'm not sure how you actually pronounce that, I'd have to look it up. But they're a high desert horse from Turkmenistan. They're one of the oldest horse breeds in the world. And it was super funny because my client bought this mare and she's like, yeah, I got papers on her. And she started to show me the papers and I was like, holy crap, this mare is a full sister to, to my gilding. There you'll see I just took a little bit more heel there. We'll clean that up. Now the plan for this horse is we're going to take a 3D half mesh pad and an Advantage rim shoe. And I'm going to put some dental impression under the pad to cushion, cushion the whole foot. There is three different types of DIM that I use. Um, the ones I use most commonly is the pink and the blue, and I think there's a green after that. I don't even use the green that much, but the blue and the pink are my go-tos. The pink is a little bit harder than the blue. Uh, if I have a horse that's having some sensitivity in their sole, I want something a little softer. I don't want a ton of pressure. You'll notice here that I'm putting uh, copper sulfate granulars in the bottom of the hoof. This helps with thrush. Now, one thing is I had a tip to wet the foot a little bit so the granulars would stay in place and I keep forgetting to do that. Um, so I try to just move my dental impression over the top of the copper sulfate. Now you'll notice I'm only going to right about the front of the frog 
And that's because that's where I want my support to be when this horse is moving. That is also where I got sensitivity with my testers. So I didn't show that here, but I actually tested this, this hoof and the sensitivity was, was towards the, the frog. I'm doing what they call a perimeter fit. So I want that shoe all the way to the outside of the hoof wall. And you'll see how the dental impression pushes into the holes in the half mesh pad. This holds that dental impression in place for the duration of the shoes. It works super well. I've been really happy with, with these pads. They're one of my go-to things to use. I really do like them. Again, I'm pushing some of that dental impression into the sides under the shoe a little bit, into the side of that. Now, when I talk to the client, we're going to try the half mesh. And so far the horse has been doing really well. It's been about a week uh, since I put these shoes on and that, that I'm editing this video now. And the horse has been doing a lot better. But if she continues to have some sensitivity, we may go to a full mesh pad and, and actually cover that whole foot to get a little bit more protection. Sometimes as farriers, we don't have all the answers. We come up with a plan and sometimes we're the superstar and the plan works really well and the horse loves it. And then other times we're not the superstar, the horse doesn't love it and we have to go back and make a new plan. Um, one of the mistakes we can get into as farriers is wanting to do the job, wanting to do the job the same way every time because it worked in the past and we get stuck in a rut. And then we run into that horse that doesn't fit our plan, doesn't do what we need, and isn't responding to what we're trying to do. And then we can make the big mistake of not changing. If what we're doing isn't working, you have to be open-minded and you have to move to a different plan and a different idea. Because it's not about you or your ego or anything else, it's about the horse and whether the horse is sound or not. And it might not be the way you do it, but if it's the way the horse likes it, then you should do it that way. I was having some issues with my nailing this, this particular day, and it is super annoying when this happens. You'll see I use half a dozen extra nails throughout this video and I just couldn't quite get my nail lines where I wanted them. And it was just one of those days, it was the end of the day, I was tired, I was hot, and things weren't coming together the way I wanted them to. And it happens, it, we're human. It, it, it's tough when we work in, in an industry, sometimes some days we're like the superstar. We go out, we do everything, we do really well, everything goes together, the shoes go on, the horses are good, and then you have this other day where Nothing goes right. Everything's wrong. We're constantly reshaping a shoe, going back to the anvil, spending too much time. Um, and you just have to be aware of that, slow down and, and do it right. And, and this nail line is pretty good. I would have liked them to be higher. Um, I like my nails to be as high as I can. Um, I was really struggling to get them up high uh, on this horse. But they're on and they've stayed on and so we're good to go and the, and the mare is moving better with the pads on. Um, over the next couple of weeks between our competitions, we'll see how much more um, we need to do, if anything. Do we need to add more pad, add more shoe? Again, when you're clinching the foot, you want those nails to lay flat against the hoof wall. What I did there is you could see how they were going to bend down and then um, they would have been too long. The clinches would have been too long. So that's why I kind of partially bent them and then I'll bend them again. 
she has pretty soft hoof walls and this can be a problem when we're clinching because you can rip i could pull that nail right through her hoof wall and we don't want to do that we don't want to damage the hoof wall we want the the nails to be solid so as with anything there's pros and cons that's one of the reasons we like to get our nails higher is the hoof wall is more rigid and moves less as the nails go up the hoof wall a hoof wall is not simply solid it actually has a lot of movement in it that's when they move and that's why we put shoes on them. shoes aren't they are protection yes but they also stabilize the hoof capsule and so when a horse is moving across uneven ground like rocks and things like that the shoe helps to keep the foot from flexing too far which is what happens when they step on a big rock This mare is kind of an awkward in-between size too. So she's not an ought, which is a size of shoe. Um, and she's not a double ought. She's kind of like in between those two sizes. The, uh, like a, a uh, so in, in shoe sizes, if you go to the store and you look, there's triple, double, and ought. Triple being the smallest, ought being larger. And then it goes one, two, three, and on up. Um, now, there are shoes that are like quad aughts and, and some that are even smaller than that for like ponies and things like that. Um, very rarely, like I don't think I've ever put a quad on. I think triple's the smallest I've ever put on a horse. Um, now, I have put on some big shoes, like a size, I think the biggest I put on is a size five. And there are drafts out there that wear like a 10 or 11. Um, but I've never, never put on a shoe that big. Again, we're not trying to rape the frog. We're just trying to trim that frog up, get it cleaned up, get get all the dead frog out of there. Um, we don't want to take the frog away. That's actually a very healthy looking frog. It's a good looking frog. Everything looks super good. This is actually a fairly healthy looking foot. Um, there's not a, I don't see a lot of signs of thrush. I don't see um, white line disease. A uh, little bit. The, the lamini actually looks pretty good. Um, this horse is on a pretty strict diet. They do not let her eat more than she should, um, especially since she's foundered in the past. Founder tends to be metabolic. It's much like diabetes in humans. So they can't process sugar. And so a lot of these horses, um, if not fed properly and fed too much sugar, they will continue to get worse. And this mare looks pretty good, all things considered. Um, the only, like I said, the only issue that we're having is that when she's being rode, and she's being rode a lot, like she's doing 20 miles a day, like... Um, I think, well, maybe not every day, but she's doing, especially on the weekends when, when this gal has time off, she's getting rode two or three times a week and she's doing 15 to 20 miles on those days training for this competition that she's going to. And you'll have to forgive me if I've misspoke on this. I'm not super up on these competitions. Uh, that, you can see that dust, that copper sulfate dust, that is really, really not good to breathe in. For all of those of you that might use copper sulfate granulars, do not breathe in the dust. It's really bad for your lungs. Um, I usually try to have some air movement so that that dust doesn't come near me or I'll blow so it doesn't, doesn't get around me. Um, usually it's not bad, but on this particular day, it just kept, kept coming up towards my face. So I hold my breath. One of the reasons I'm putting the sulfate, I'm really putting it heavy into the commissures. That's where most of, where I find most of the thrush and bacteria will gather. That's where it gets trapped. That's where it stays. That's where we want to get rid of it. So I tend to treat those areas heavy. When I come back in six weeks or five weeks when we reset this horse before her next competition, um, I'll do a video when we do that, but you'll see blue throughout the hoof where the the sol copper sulfate has 
absorbed into the hoof. And the cool thing is it actually kills all the bacteria in there. It's, it's again, a super, super handy way with these pads. And I think it, pads are such a danger when you're working with horses because anytime you cover the bottom of that foot, it leaves it open to getting bacteria in there and causing all kinds of other issues. So if we can treat that foot and not have bacteria in there, it's way better for this horse. Um, you can see the difference. I On one horse in particular, I forgot the copper sulfate granulars. And when I came back in eight weeks, it was noticeable. You could see the difference between the hoof health from using them and not using them. One of the hard things with, with this horse, one, she's an overreacher, which is interesting because my, my gilding is also an overreacher, hardcore, loves, loves to pull shoes. This mare, same deal, uh, very long stride. Kind of just forcing a little bit of that uh, DIM material back in under that hoof. What I'll do is I'll usually get the shoes set, and then I'm gonna set the foot down. I'll let them stand on it, kind of push it to where it needs to be. And then I'll drive my last nails, depending on the day. Now in the winter, I don't have to do this. I can drive all the nails in the winter. Um, and if it's cooler, I can do that. But if I don't drop that foot right about there, the DIM will set up and it won't push into the holes which is not what I want. I want that foot to step down and kind of mold it into all the crevices and cracks and not overpressure the frog. Now you'll notice there's still some DIM really far up in that toe. Um, I'll take a knife and cut that out of here. I don't think I got that part on video. I forgot to start the camera, but you'll see it here in a little bit that I cut it out. Again, you can see me really struggling. I can feel when I'm driving that nail, I can feel it trying to go in the old nail hole. And so I finally just ran it forward. So there was an old nail hole there and I could not get up and around it because it was, it was higher up in the hoof wall and it was just not super healthy hoof wall right where that nail was wanting to go. And so I'm actually going to try and I'm trying to get those nails up as high as I can in the hoof wall. And she kind of has a little bit of a flared foot and those nails were just not wanting to climb very much. And the other thing is once you're driving that nail, I can usually feel it grab the old nail hole and I don't want them in those holes. I want solid hoof underneath the nail. The shoe will stay on way better if you do. And like I said, some days it's like, boom, everything goes on really good. And then other days, not so much. And you can see here, see that front nail's really low. Like I can critique my own work, my own work sometimes, like especially watching these videos after I've done it. I'm like, God, I could have done this different. You know, there's always room for improvement. Every time I watch a video, I can think, well, I should have changed that. I could have done this better. Well, that'll about do it for today. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Let us know what you think in the comments and we'll see you next time.